Okay, let's meditate for a few minutes before the blessing. We've been running around all morning. It's time to settle down. You think of all the good that we've done. You notice in a monastery everything is voluntary. There are no compulsory donations, not even suggested donations. This is in line with the Buddha's observation that a gift given voluntarily is, is the most productive of happiness. A king came to the Buddha one time and asked him, where should a gift be given? If he'd had experience with the Jains and other religious people. The Jains said, well, give to the Jains. The Brahmins said, give to the Brahmins. He probably expected the Buddha to say, give to the Buddhists. But he didn't. He said, give where you feel inspired. And that's become part of the culture of generosity in Buddhism. When a monk is asked, where should I give a gift, you should say, give where you feel inspired or you feel it be well used or well taken care of. In other words, gifts should be totally free. Now there is a skill in giving, if you want to take it beyond that. If the king asked the Buddha then, where is a gift given so that it gives a great fruit? And the Buddha said, that's a different question. You give to people who you feel are either free of passion, aversion, and illusion, or on the path to that. You give in season, in other words, you give in cases where people really are in need. And you give gifts that are appropriate for the time and place. You give with an attitude of respect, you give with an attitude that you're doing something important. Some people give with the idea, with the attitude of just, they're just kind of throwing stuff away. And then you give with the motivation that you realize that giving is a good thing to do. And the mind feels serene. When you can cultivate these attitudes, then the gift is even more productive of happiness. So think of the practice as being a gift. A gift to others, a gift to give to yourself. Because the gift is not only in material things, it's also the gift of virtue. You abstain from harming other people. And the gift of meditation, where you train the mind so that your greed, inversion, and delusion don't go running around and disturbing the neighbors. And this way, everybody benefits. It's good all around. These three activities, generosity, virtue, meditation, they're ways of finding happiness in a, that harm no one. And this is something we should keep in mind, that you see people looking for happiness and they don't really seem to care what the consequences will be for other people. Years back I was asked to re review a book on positive psychology, talking about the psychology of happiness. And I was asked to take a Buddhist look at this particular book. And I noted that the author didn't give any consideration to what are the consequences of your search for happiness. It was all about the different things you might do to find happiness, but the consequences it might have for other people weren't, didn't enter into the equation. So I talked about the karma of happiness. And the editor of the magazine asked me to do that. So he was surprised that I talked about karma, not about emptiness or not self, or something like that. I was surprised that he was surprised. Karma is so basic, because we realize our actions have consequences for ourselves and for other people. So we want to be careful. And the search for happiness is something the Buddha encourages. In the beginning of wisdom, he says, is when you ask those you think you know, what when I do it will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness. The search for happiness can be wise. It can give rise to good qualities in the mind. So think about that in your search for happiness. What are the consequences of what you do? And the Buddha has it laid out. These are the types of, these are the ways of searching for happiness that are happy in and of themselves and lead to good consequences on into the future.